Let's preview. Monday night football, Liverpool have an away game against Watford. But before we get into any of that, we're going to have a quick, brief look, well, brief discussion about the weekend results and how they've actually maybe gone in the favour of Liverpool a little bit. But we're all on equal games now, I think, as far I think the top six now have all played 34 games. This will be our 35th, so we will be one game ahead still. So we've still got a lot of work to do. Makes every single game that we play now is a must-win game. But let's have a look at those ones anyway. Manchester United drew with Swansea. Um, not a surprising result, to be honest, because Swansea can play pretty damn well. And you've also got to look at Man United's injury problems that they've had. They've got their big players out, Ibrahimovic and Pogba. They've had two additional ones today in Luke Shaw came off very early and Eric Bailly came off as well. Swansea got a very good goal through Sigurdsson, but it was a 1-1. They could have lost that game. They didn't. They drew it, and instead, they've managed to gain a point onto the top four places that they've been wanting. They would have obviously been looking for the win, I think, with Swansea sitting in 18th position, but you do have to take into consideration the amount of injuries that they had to that team as well. We've been crippled by it ourselves, Liverpool. We've been crippled by injuries and stuff like that as well. It happens. Everton were beaten 3-0 by Chelsea. It doesn't really affect us in any any great deal of a way. Chelsea are far ahead. 81 points on the board, and they definitely look like they're odds-on champions now. They pretty much have one hand on the trophy already. Middlesbrough drew 2-2 with Manchester City, which was a surprising result for me. I didn't get to watch the game because I was watching another one. Alvaro Negredo scores for Middlesbrough. You know, Aguero gets a penalty. And then Callum Chambers scores. And then Jesus, Gabriel Jesus, or Jesus, however you say his name, I'm not entirely sure, comes out and scores in the 85th minute, and it's 2-2. But Middlesbrough don't score a lot of goals as it is. So for them to score two goals, that's pretty ridiculous. But to also take a team like Man City to a 2-2, Middlesbrough will be obviously have wanted to win the game with their position in the league as well. But Man City should have been looking at that game thinking, we also need to solidify our Champions League spot. Let's go and win this game. They could have jumped over us and we would have gone into fourth place, just like Manchester United could have. We Liverpool easily could have ended up in fifth place after today instead and this is Sunday and instead we've actually ended up being able to stay in third position and I don't really understand how that's happened only because two teams Manchester United and Man City haven't taken their opportunities to actually win the games that they had against teams lower in the table which is exactly something that Liverpool themselves have been very guilty of we don't take our opportunities against the lower teams in the league and then you had Tottenham versus Arsenal and it seemed like it was going to be a bit of a drab affair until two minutes of madness and a 56th and 58th minute, I think it was, um, Tottenham get two goals, one penalty. People saying it's controversial. When I saw the replay, I thought it was a penalty. But even so, it's not, that's just my opinion. Tottenham, you know, win 2-0 pretty comfortably. Arsenal, the 3-4-3 didn't seem to work today. It wasn't working as good as it was against the other teams that they faced. And Arsenal just looked a little bit toothless. I think going with Giroud up front doesn't work. It didn't work with what they were trying to do. If you're going to use Giroud, you're going to, especially against Tottenham, you want an aerial threat. You know, use his aerial abilities because he's quite he's quite good in the in the air. Instead, they weren't using that. You know, if you're not going to play that way, then you, why not use Danny Welbeck, who's a much more mobile striker and can get in and around defenses as well. I think it looks like it's a missed opportunity for Arsenal. They still have, I think, one game in hand. It'll be two games in hand over us when we play on Monday night, but even so, it means that Liverpool now still somehow sit in third. I think Man City are tied with us on points and goal difference at the moment, so that's going to be pretty tight, but I think, I don't know what else keeps us third on that one. Now, we've got to look at look at Watford now. I've talked about that. We're going to look at Watford and how why it's an important game, because Watford, now where are Watford in the league? Let's just have a quick look. Watford are 13th in the league. They've hit that 40-point spot. Um, which is normally means you're going to be safe in the league, but they will have been looking for a bit more of a bigger season with Walter Mazzari having uh, sacked, uh, is it Flores last year? Kike, Kike Flores? I can't remember his name. He had a pretty long name. Anyway, they will have been looking for a bit of a better season. They've done kind of what they sometimes do. Well, what they did last year, where they kind of like the first half of the season did quite okay. They did okay. They did pretty well. Second half of the season, it kind of you know, it tails away. Now, if I'm looking at their last six results as well that they've had, they've won three, they've lost three. They, I was going to say the people that they lost against were like, you know, teams that you would think that they would possibly lose against, but that's not entirely the case. 
They got beat 4-0 by Tottenham. But then it was sort of like teams that were in and around them. So going back to 18th of March, they lost 1-0 to Crystal Palace. It's a one nil Okay, not too bad. Palace are looking pretty decent, as everyone will no doubt know, because of how bad they we performed against Crystal Palace and Benteke in particular. Anyway, let's move past that. They then went and beat Sunderland 1-0, which Sunderland are relegated. You know, I say it's like they might as well just be giving away wins, but then I think we've still got to play Sunderland as well. So I think we got a 2-2 last time we played them. So that's, yeah, <laughs> that's wishful thinking. And then they came up two against West Brom and they won 2-0. Then it was Tottenham 4-0. They then beat Swansea 1-0. And then they lost against 10-man Hull 2-0, which is where some of the questions do come in. And I think Troy Deeney had come out after that game saying that it was like they, you know, the players played like it was a FIFA game, like it didn't really matter. And yeah, sometimes Watford do that. Now, on the flip side, Liverpool can do that as well. You got the Crystal Palace game, beautiful free kick by Coutinho. Shades give me memories of the free kick that he had against Arsenal at the start of the season. And then Benteke just absolutely fired up and they beat us 2-1 before that we had victories against West Brom and Stoke had a draw against Bournemouth beat Everton and then a draw against Man City so our our form looks better than it actually is because of how we've been playing our playing style hasn't been that good in my opinion but that is purely just my opinion some people don't agree with it this game is a weird one for a couple of reasons mainly because Watford have had the ability I'll never forget, I think it was in December 2015, uh, they beat us 3-0. And, yeah, that's not... They do have the potential there to do that. They do have potential to cause us problems, the same as any other team does. Now, the good boost that Liverpool have at the moment is Adam Lallana is apparently going to be fit to start, which is great news, and Sturridge will be available on the bench. Again, good news because it looks like we will have a much stronger bench maybe then I think there's uh, talks of Trent Alexander-Arnold and Ben Woodburn is going to be on the bench as well good options to have in late on as long as things are going okay if they're not going okay what are the options there Sturridge is a good option if things aren't going too well can get in and around that defence hopefully because I do think that Watford Watford do have if I'm just going to have a quick look here I think Watford have some injury concerns that you know, could play in our favour. So they've got um, Bayrami is out, Yunus Kabul, Pereira, Mauro Zarati is also injured as well. So fingers crossed, because Zarati, in my opinion, he was doing. He, I thought he was underused at West Ham. And I think he's quite a good. Um, he's quite a good creative player. Same with Pereira, but it's one of these things as well that we can't take for granted. We've also got to think, Jordan Henderson, still no timeline. On when he's going to be coming back, our captain, and this seems to happen whenever Henderson gets injured, and I think it's something to do with his foot again. Whenever he gets injured, there's never a timeline for when he's going to be fit. Like it would be like, oh, you know, I think they came out like two weeks ago saying he'll be back in two weeks, start of May, he'll be back in. Now all of a sudden it's like there's no timeline on Jordan Henderson. Anyway, we have shown against the likes of West Brom and Stoke that we can we can find ways to win, but they need to play with some confidence, like. I say that the first half against Crystal Palace was okay until Benteke got his goal. Now, when he got his goal and went to 1-1, everything seemed to drain drain out the team. And I don't know why that happened because we're in a very good place. We're still in third place in the league. We can't go any higher and we can't go any lower just yet. Not until, I think, maybe midweek or the weekend. We can't go any lower than that this weekend, which is the main point. We stay in third. We can only we can mainly you know improve our points and improve our goal difference as well, which is going to be goal difference could be key between us and Manchester City right now. That is going to be vital because it could mean the difference between us finishing third and finishing fourth and having to qualify. So we want to make sure that we go. I've always said for a fair few weeks now. I think people can agree if you've been watching, we should be aiming for top three so then we're definitely into the groups and that puts us in a better way into next year transfer market all that sort of stuff Watford are are a dangerous team when they're on fire it's when they're on fire they don't seem to score a lot of goals lately they are very hit and miss with when they score or when they're gonna when they win games they don't they they just basically seem to to, well as you see in the last six games they either win games or they lose them I think starting lineup you've got Coutinho and Firmino definitely Definitely, in my opinion. If Lallana's fit, 
definitely, definitely has to be in there. Emre Chan, Wijnaldum, back four. You've got to be looking at Joel Matip. Um, and it has to be Lovren because Clavon is out injured. Now, you could put Joe Gomez in there, but this is such a key moment of the season where we have to, all these, our rest of our games from tomorrow night, we have to win all of them. Draws don't really do us any good. Losing, obviously not. We need to be winning, winning these games. Lovren is coming for a lot of stick, and deservedly so, after his, after his, uh, well, after his performance against Crystal Palace, and then this, like, I think yesterday it was, on Friday, it gets confirmed that he's got an upgrade in his contract and he's signed a new deal, and people were really angry about that. Um, I think one tweet I saw was like, I'd rather eat, I would rather eat 100,000 one pound coins than give any of them to Lovren. And I'm like, yeah, fair play. He can have these heroic games and he can have these absolutely shocking games. And he had an absolute shocker against Crystal Palace. There's no doubt about it. He needs to be absolutely on form. Really, really big style. Needs to put in a big, big performance. Joel Matip definitely needs a big performance from him. I want the entire back four, which will hopefully include Nathaniel Klein and Milner. I want that whole back four to stay as a back four, please. Stay as a back four. I don't care if Watford are going to sit off us. Don't don't care whatsoever. It doesn't mean that you then get permission to just go forward and start wanting to like put these nice Hollywood passes or putting long passes through into the you know centre forwards, midfield and everything like that. Stay as your back four as a priority, please. For God's sake, stay like that because we will not get torn apart as easily if we just stay structured at the back stay structured at the back let the midfield take care of the creativity up front and then let the forwards whoever that might be take care of business up on that end be structured and be sensible I missed one name out in that it'll be probably be Origi being up front as well Origi has to put in a big performance has to do something to justify him starting. Otherwise, you're going to have to see Sturridge coming in. And I don't mind Sturridge starting. I just, at the moment, I prefer him as an impact sub because he's a hell of an impact sub to have. He really is. He proved it against Stoke. He was very pivotal in our last final final couple of moments where he just seemed something just seemed to change. The mentality changed a little bit. The speed of the play, it changed. He has a very good vision for, for passing when he passes. And I think he's trying to do that sort of stuff to make up for the fact that he's lost a lot of pace recent, like with his injuries and stuff that he's had. I don't know. I, I don't exactly know how the team's going to line up. I don't think anybody does, obviously, until the team is announced tomorrow night. But it's important that we go with a strong team, strong mentality. It's, it's got to, It has to be. It cannot be anything less because our games aren't going to be any easier despite where any of the teams are in the league. Don't listen to any of the media guys. You hear like the likes of Paul Merson saying that we should be blowing these guys away 3-0 and blah, 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 blah. I'd love it if it happened. I'd also love it if it was just a 1-0. I don't care how we do it. But let's not be sucked in to what these Sky Sports experts, just because they played in the game, are talking about when they're saying that, well, we should be blowing these lot away, should be blowing these lot away. No, what you need to look at is every single team's weakness. Our weakness has always been aerial balls and stuff like that in the last, definitely the last couple of seasons. We suffer from it. We have to work very, very hard for it. Now, Troy Deeney is going to be... Now, in terms of a, of a prediction, I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking, I'd love to see us do a 2-0. I really would. I'd love to see a 2-0 professional performance. Um, I'd like to see Origi get involved in the goals, either assisting or scoring. I want to see him involved in the goals and get a bit more of that confidence back that he had last year, right before his injury when he got injured at Everton uh, last year. I want to see some of that confidence come back where he was scoring ridiculous goals from stupid angles and he was confident. He was just taking goals on. He was he, you could, he was the leader up front. You could put the ball to Origi and you knew something was going to happen. This year hasn't quite hit that height yet and it's, you know he's running out of time to do it. He's still a young lad. Got a lot of development left to do, but he's got to, you know, he's got to take his opportunity. Same with every single member of the squad that plays. Coutinho and Firmino, they have to be running the show. Coutinho especially, in my opinion. Wijnaldum and Emre Chan are going to have a difficult, they're going to have a difficult game in that midfield, I think. I think they're going to have to make sure that they bridge the gap properly between defence and our attack and not just be stuck up front so that if we get counted on, it's going to leave the, either the back four or the back two, as Crystal Palace discovered, because our 
you know, our right backs and left back just bomb up the field and they leave those two to be exposed. We can't have that happen. I'd love to see a two nil. I think it'll be a I think it'll be a two one in reality. If we score first, I think we can take care of this game. I know we didn't against Crystal Palace, but I think we can do it against Watford, a team that are low on confidence. Um I think we can do it. We need to do it so, so badly. Definitely, definitely need to be doing it. What do you guys think in the comments below? Let me know what you think. What's your prediction? Watford fans, Liverpool fans, what are your predictions? Let me know. Neutral fans as well. How do you think this game's going to go? And can Liverpool stay, like solidify a little bit more of the top four? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you ever so much for watching. As always... And I'll catch you later.